Hi, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor, fan of various elements of Japanese music and culture, and particularly of dance vocal band Atarashi Gakko, who uh, I just got to see. I'm in Chicago right now at my in law's place, and uh, I saw them at the Aragon Ballroom October 3rd, 2024. Uh, that is a lot, three days ago, four days ago. And I thought I would talk about the show, but, you know, I, I, I shot quite a bit of footage. I was pretty close to the front. I have almost an hour of footage. And I figured that maybe rather than talking about the experience, I thought I would simply show you what I have. I'll talk at the end a little bit, just make some observations that maybe aren't obviously self-evident from the video. And probably I'll, I'll talk particularly about what made this show different from the last time I saw them, which was just under a year ago in Washington, D.C. at the Black Cat at a much smaller venue, which is what characterized most of that early part of the tour. This is billed as the second part of their world tour, but it felt very different and featured a lot of very different material since we had the new album come out earlier this year. So let me just let you see it because it's pretty great.
Yeah! <laughs> 
interest in the candy. <laughs> Eiji, calling one to a part two. One day, one to a shiatsu. Sasuko, Mexico!
What a show, right? It just makes me smile watching it again. It's, there's something about live shows, that sense of being in the presence of something that you've seen before, but it's different when you're actually there, and it's so great. I just wanted to share the footage, you know, because rather than just having me talk about it, I think, you know, you can sense what it was like to be there and they put on such a good performance it's, there's so much so much polish and talent and work it's just great and, and it's so good to see that they're starting to get some real recognition and all the hard work over the years is, is finally starting to pay off it's a, a, a wonderful experience and I think that everybody, everybody loved it. Again, and very diverse crowd, people of all ages and backgrounds and ethnicities, you know, and everybody felt welcome. And it, there was a tremendous spirit within the audience. Everybody seemed to be having a really good time and not a lot of pushing and shoving and fighting. There was a, a, a collective sense of being welcomed by the band and uh, I think we everybody everybody had a great time what a show <laughs> so there you have it <laughs> as you can see it was pretty spectacular and spectacle I think is one of the things that I would focus on which made this show very different from the show at the Black Cat last year I mean th this we were, they were performing this time for several thousand people whereas at the Black Cat it had been several hundred and there was a very different kind of dynamic. Obviously, that stage last year was much, much smaller. The audience was right on top of them. And there was no room for anything in terms of lights or projections, lasers, or any of that stuff. They had some of that at some of the other dates, but not at the Black Cat. So it was just about them, their personality, their performance abilities with their microphones in a very, very small space. And as I say, they were right on top of the audience. The stage was very low. 
It was a very intimate kind of experience, very personal. And, you know, you sensed at that show their own excitement at what was effectively their first headline tour in the U.S., and the fact that all these people were there specifically for them and knew their songs, and there was this palpable sense of exhilaration and delight and playfulness, which came through really well. And it was an unforgettable night. So much so that I was a little apprehensive about the show. I talked to my wife about it earlier beforehand, and, you know, we really wanted to see them again, but we knew that it wouldn't be that kind of experience. And it wasn't. It was a totally different experience. And in many ways, just as great, but totally different. And as you can see, you know, it was all the bells and whistles, some great, some visuals that were really sensational. And uh, both in terms of the special effects, but those projections, which are really well suited to a lot of the songs and gave a tremendous counterpoint to the music. The dynamic between them was also a little different. They were more polished, slicker, more seasoned, you know. And I said this when I reviewed the Coachella show, that it was a marked transition from what they had been. They were rock stars now. And I think we got that in this show as well, a, a, a great sense that these were consummate artists who knew exactly what they were doing. I think it also took them a tiny bit longer to feel comfortable and to um, to enjoy the experience as much as they had enjoyed maybe the, those more intimate shows in the past. But, you know, as an audience member, it was hard to complain. It was They were absolutely on it. I think the sound was very slightly off some of the time because I think it was balanced for, it's balanced for a big room and we were down at the front. And I think, you know, the sound might have been better, you know, a few rows back. But, I mean, when I say better, I mean the microphones would have been a little louder, a little bit better pitched. But I'm not saying they were out of tune or anything like that. They absolutely weren't. Uh, I just wish that sometimes there was a bit more boost on them. But, yeah, (laughs) great show, really great show. And we got to hear a bunch of songs that we haven't that we didn't get to hear last time because of the new material at the very end and there was that wonderful little moment where there was a piece of music which i did not know where they did a little choreography interlude i don't even know what that was i deliberately didn't check out any other fan footage of the tour so far so that i could be surprised by what they did and didn't do and this was great. I got to see Suki Lai, which they didn't play at the DC show and is one of my favorite songs. And so that was particularly a great moment. And it's funny when they, they did the first sort of false ending, they did the Nai 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 and Suzuki goes off into the audience, which she seems to do all the time now at the end of that, during that song and do the part of the, the vocal from the very back of the room. This time there was I mean, she had to fight her way through and it seemed like the security guys were a bit taken aback and having to sort of run after her as she sort of forged her way through to the back of the room. But, you know, that was great. And then she did the the whole James Brown, I don't want to go thing, which they premiered at the Coachella performance. So it was great to see that live. And then the show sort of finished, you know, and obviously they were going to do an encore, but, you know, Japanese bands don't always do an encore. And I was, I felt this sort of momentary disappointment and I couldn't place what it was, apart from the fact that the show was over and I was sad to see it finish. But then I realized what it was when they came back on and they did Fantastico, which was a surprise, right? To go back to the Snack Time EP for the, for the encore. And, and then we got Forever Sisters and it was the perfect way to to wrap up the show and I realized that's why I was disappointed because we hadn't heard it and I had just sort of mentally I wasn't consciously noting that it was not there that it hadn't been part of the set but I was a little disappointed and it flowed perfectly well after Fantastico and made you realize that those two songs were recorded at the same time even though Forever Sisters was not released until much later and it was a great way to pull everything together. And we got to hear Que Sera Sera as well, which I think thought we would never hear. So the show 
finished with that very melodic and somewhat low-key Japanese pop sound, which was a refreshing change after the sort of frenetic energy that we'd been getting elsewhere in the show. Uh, speaking of frenetic energy, we also got the electronic remixes of Koigaba and Saisyu Jinrui, and, uh, and Suzuka made a point of asking if we enjoyed them. And, and I think the answer is, yeah, I, I think they're, they're great for, for the live experience. Do I like them as much as the originals as a piece of music simply to listen to? Probably not, no. Uh, and it, it's interesting that, you know, the, the, the two, the only two of the older songs that they've done, you know, from the first and second albums respectively, have now been completely remastered in the way that Pineapple Kryptonite was remastered. So, you know, I, I don't know if we'll ever hear those originals again in the live shows. And I, I think, it, it, you know, it represents a deliberate strategy that there's, there's a sound shift here that's happened specifically, I think, for the new brand, for the, the world market and so on. And, you know, I, I'm always a little bit conflicted about that because I actually think that a lot of the American fans actually really like a lot of the older material as well. And, and we don't necessarily need everything to have that very digitally processed kind of feel. I, I mean, it was conspicuous that there was, there's more auto-tune on the, on the voices here in a stylistic way, not, not designed to keep them in tune, which they're obviously more than capable of doing by themselves. But on those two songs, you can hear the auto-tune working on the voice as well to make the whole thing a little bit more synthesized. And, you know, as I say, in the moment, in the live show, it's really cool. I, I'm i quite happy with the originals, but there you go. When you watch them now, you know, there's a sense, obviously, this is a band who've been working together for a long time. They have every element of the choreography down and they know how to work together as a unit. I, I love the way that they all have their sort of showcase moments and the live performance is designed to facilitate that. So it's not just the Suzuka show, you know, everybody is is there and doing their full thing, which is great. And that the choreography itself hasn't lost a step in any way whatsoever. You know, I, I've heard them often compared to other Japanese bands that involve dance. And to me, these guys are head and shoulders above most of those other bands because they're real dancers. They're not just doing steps. They're not just doing choreographic gesture. They're, they're dancers. You can see it in their bodies, the way that they move. There's an elegance, a sensuality. There's a, a level of professionalism, which is quite unlike most of the other bands in these kind of categories. So, you know, I, I think that they are, if you get chance to see them live, you know, you should absolutely take it. It's not, not to be missed. The other thing I would say is that in adjusting to the larger stage, and perhaps in adjusting to being a tiny bit older, some of the frenetic energy has gone down a little. It's there in certain songs, but it's in pockets. And a lot of the choreography around some of the newer material is a little bit more laid back, a little bit more manageable, and a little bit more reliant on grace and harmony and collaboration than it is on pure high energy athletic charging around and jumping about and doing somersaults and all that sort of stuff i noticed you know i don't think miju did her her forward roll thing that she usually does and the whole thing felt just a tiny bit more sedate and i without without losing any kind of any of the energy i don't mean that i mean that there's a kind of a slightly bit more mellow approach that we're there with them they don't have to work quite as hard to get us up to speed and it's conspicuous that this the encore featured the most mellow songs that in terms of the physicality of what they're doing the end of the show actually gives them a bit of a come down and now we can come back to to something which is a little bit more chill as money mark said when i interviewed him uh, he said that he felt like he was in forever sisters he was giving them a song that they would be able to do forever. And I think it means that the show can expand a little bit. It felt a little less frenetic. We got a bit more stuff without ever taking our foot off the gas. So we didn't get those dead spots that we saw in the Tokyo, in some of the big Tokyo shows that they've done where they were incorporating very low key songs and suddenly all the energy went out of the room. 
And much as I like those songs to listen to, I think this is a stronger choice, you know, to to keep the up tempo stuff, to keep the, the the high energy stuff, but to scale back some of the choreography a little bit so that they're not absolutely flagging by the end of it. I don't know what else to say. I wish the sound was a little bit better on the recording, but at the same time, and sometimes my video is off because I was actually, I was just enjoying the show. So yeah, it was great. It was great. And, and uh, you know, I got to meet a few people who were familiar with this channel. One guy who, who brought a copy of Hideki for me to sign, which was very cool. And as with the last show, there was this sense of a real community in the audience that they were all kind of hardcore fans, no matter what ticket they bought whether they did the vip thing or the fast track or the general admission stuff everybody seemed really into it and i think that it was a mark of the extent to which they have arrived over the last well what, let's call it 18 months their their profile has really really gone up and it was great to see and i i feel I a lot of people feel like especially those of us who've been around for a while, following them for a number of years, that, I don't know, it's like watching your kids graduate or something. That They've hit a level of success which is absolutely fully deserved and just great to see. And it's great that they seem to be still having a good time with it and producing new material and delivering fantastic entertainment, which is what it's all about. So that's all I'm going to say. So... As ever, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Patreon page, and thank you to all my patrons who make this channel possible. Check out also my books, my merchandise, and if you have comments, please, you know. And that's it. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.